going to see some applications of depth first search. So one application of depth first search is to uh, identify what are called articulation points of a graph. So what is an articulation point? So an articulation point is by definition is if you remove the vertex from the graph, is the graph going to get disconnected or not? If the graph is going to get disconnected, means they're going to have two or more components, then the vertex that you just removed from the graph is it can be called an articulation point. So um, let me use an example to explain this. Um, so if you are, if I remove vertex one, say from this graph, so if it's difficult to view with uh, tree and back edges, let us just go with the original graph. So if I remove vertex one from this graph, it's going to disconnect the graph into two or more components because they're going to have eight, nine, ten, eleven that are not reachable to this component of two, three, five, four, five, six, seven. So removing vertex one will, and when I say I remove vertex 1, I'm removing the edges also incident on vertex 1. So I'm going to break or disconnect the graph into two or more components, in this case two components. One component will be 8, 9, 10, 11 and the other components will be 2, 3, the other component will be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if that happens, then the vertex that you just removed is an articulation point. So given a graph, you can decide whether it, uh, a particular vertex is an articulation point or not by just removing the vertex and then again running depth first search uh, from some other vertex. But that's a time consuming process. So what we can do is use the result of depth first search that we just went through uh, by starting with some vertex itself is sufficient to identify the articulation points of a graph. Now again, as I said, uh, if you want to go to a brute force approach, we have to remove that particular vertex. So if I want to decide whether say 3 is an articulation point, what I have to do is I have to remove the vertex and then decide whether the graph gets discounted or not. So you have to do that for every vertex, that's a time consuming process. So instead we are going to do uh, use the results of depth first search that we just went through uh, to decide whether the vertex is an articulation point or not. So now to identify the articulation point, uh, there are some rules, okay, so it depends on how the vertices get classified as you did depth first search. So as you did depth first search, uh, we identify the vertices as something called an internal node, means a uh, vertex is an internal node if you have a child node further down, means you have a tree edge connected to a node further down. So it started in this example with vertex 1 and we have three edges to vertex, uh, vertices 2 and vertices 8. So we say 2 and 8 are the child nodes of vertex 1, similar to the binary tree terminology or in general tree terminology. Now similarly for vertex 2, 3 is a child node. So that's a tree edge connected from be, uh, between 2 and 3. So for vertex 3, 4 is a child node as 5 is also a child node. So if you remember also the terminology of a subtree, so we can say for one has two subtrees that are connected to it. So one subtree is starting from vertex 2. So that subtree is rooted at vertex 2. So the nodes that are part of subtree are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. And uh, another subtree is rooted at vertex 8, 8, 9, 10, 11 or is another subtree. Okay. So now, what are the rules for articulation point? So, uh, uh, before that, let me also define. So, the, so far we saw what is called an internal node because a node is an internal node if it has at least one child node, like I just explained. You have a tree edge connected further down. Now, if a node does not have a child node, it's called a leaf node. So, node 4 uh, is a leaf node because it doesn't have a tree edge to a node further down in this depth first search tree. So what I mean by I say further down, you see kind of you started, if you visualize this as a tree starting from vertex 1 with the root as the root, this is a tree with, uh, as you go from vertex 1 you go to 2 and 8 and from 2 you can go to 3, from 3 you can go to 4 and 5, likewise here from 8 you can go to 9, from 9 to 11 and 11 to 10. So you cannot go further down from 4 or 7 or 10 because they don't have tree edge further down. So these three vertices, 4, 7 and 10 can be called leaf nodes because they don't have child. 
On the other hand, uh, the, these nodes have at least one child node. So from one, we can go to either two or eight. From two, we can go to three. From three, we can go to four and five and so on. So uh, if a node in the depth first search tree has at least one child, then it's called an internal node. So after you do depth first search, you have to identify the internal nodes and the leaf nodes in the depth first search tree. So once you are uh, once you have identified that, you are now in a position to classify the vertices as uh, whether an articulation point or not. Okay. So the rule depends on whether the vertex or node is a leaf node or an internal node. And then for internal node, there's a, there are some subcategories of for the rules. Let us first look at a simple rule. So the simple rule is this: if a node is a leaf node, it's not an articulation point. So using that rule, we can discard 4, 7 and 10. They are not articulation points. That means even if I remove uh, a leaf node, say 4, from this graph, the other vertices are going to stay connected as one component. So you can cross-check. If I remove 4 from this graph, nothing is the other vertices are going to still stay connected. They are not going, the graph is not going to get disconnected. Because if you remove 4, only these two edges will go away to 3 and 1. The other uh, edges and vertices will stay, so they are not going to get disconnected. Similarly, if I remove 7, these three edges will go, but the other vertices are still going to stay connected. Similarly for 10. So leaf nodes are not going to be articulation points. Now what about internal node? Now, uh, uh, again, uh, in the internal node, we have two categories. Uh, we have to look specifically look at the root node and then the other internal nodes. Now the rule for a root node to be called an articulation point is this. Uh, if the root node has at least two child nodes, then it can be called an articulation point. If a root node has only one child node, means it has only one tree edge further down, then it cannot be called an articulation point. So in this case, the root node 1 has two child nodes, 2 and 8, because you have two tree edges, 1, 2, 2, and 1 tree edge to 8. So it could be, uh, node 1 is called an articulation point. And uh, you can cross-check as we just did in the earlier. If I remove node 1 and all the uh, attached edges to node 1, the graph is going to get disconnected to two or more components. So the uh, root node in this case, in this example here, is an articulation point. Now the root node uh, in some other graph, depends on the graph, need not be an articulation point. So I have another example to illustrate that. So if you run depth first search on this graph, which we'll do later, this is the depth first search tree we'll get. And one is the root node because they started from one. And you see here in this example, there's only one child node for node one, which is node two, connected with a tree edge. So uh, node one, the root node, is not an articulation point here because it has only one child node in this depth first search tree. So you can again cross check. If I remove node one, the graph, the rest of the vertices are still going to stay connected. So uh, the root node in this example is not an articulation point. Okay. So that's the rule for uh, the root node. So the root node is an articulation point if it has at least two child nodes for the down and the depth first search tree. Now, so what about the other internal nodes? So for the other internal nodes, we have to apply this rule. So let us uh, explain. Let me explain the general rule, uh, policy rule first, and then look at this example. So let us pick, say, uh, node U is an internal node other than the root. So when I say it's an internal node other than the root, it means it has something further up. So the root is somewhere here, and from the root we go through the tree edges and reach vertex U. And it's an internal node also, so that means it has some child node. So let us indicate those using these tree edges. So vertex U is an internal node other than a root node. So that means it is not the root, it's somewhere in the, uh, in, in the middle of the depth first search tree. So it has also child nodes further down. So as I also said, we can call everything further down on each of those tree edges as a subtree. So this is now from you on this tree edge, you have a subtree uh, starting from this child node which is attached to you here. And uh, you can also call this as a subtree attached to this child node to you and then another subtree and another subtree and so on. So node U in this just example, uh, hypothetical example here has four subtrees. Now what you have to check is this, uh, check from whether from each of these subtrees 
do you have a back edge going above you in this depth first search tree so above you means when i say above you it is like the vertices that are above you in this depth first search tree from uh, so as i said use not the root so there should be something above you also so check from each of the sub trees whether you have at least one back edge from each of them to a node that is above you so in this case it's s so from this sub tree you have a back edge to to this kind of set of vertices above you then from this sub tree yes you have a back edge from this sub tree yes you have a back edge from this sub tree you have a back edge so that is why in this example here this u is not an articulation point because from each of these sub trees you have a back edge that goes above you so you can call the vertices above you as what is called ancestral nodes ancestral node nodes means the nodes that are above you in the depth first search tree now look at this example scenario here u is also an internal node here uh, that is not a root node so that you have some nodes that are above you in this depth first search tree and some nodes further down so again these are the four sub trees because you have four child node uh, four tree edges so each is a child node that is rooted uh, that is uh, serving as root of those sub trees now you see here from this sub tree you have back edge going above you from this sub tree also you have back edge going above you from this sub tree also you have back edge going above you but from this sub tree you have only one back edge that comes out and it goes only up to you it does not go above you so if you have even one sub tree for an internal node like you here from which there's no back edge that goes above you in that depth first search tree then we can call this u as an articulation point now it is simply because the logical reasoning is if i remove u and all the attached edges to u what's going to happen these sub trees are going to be connected to the rest of the vertices using these back edges whereas this sub tree is not going to be connected to the rest of the vertices because you have removed this edge as well as this edge back edge that is attached to you so there's no other way that this sub tree is going to be connected to the rest of the vertices so for that reason uh, we call this u as an articulation point so even presence of one such sub tree that does not have a back edge that goes above you in the depth first search tree will uh, make that vertex u to be called an articulation point Okay. So that's a general uh, rule for an internal node other than the root to be decided whether it's an articulation point or not. So now let us apply this rule in this example here. Uh, so let us decide whether this vertex 2 which is an internal node other than the root is an articulation point or not. So the subtrees uh, root uh, from 2 are just, uh, there's only one subtree because there's only one tree edge coming further down from node 2. Okay, so as you it has node two has only one child node, which is node three, and uh, node three is the root of that subtree. Okay, now uh, from abo uh, uh, node two above node two, you have node one. So those this is now the ancestral node. So there's only one ancestral node for node two. So basically, no, uh, we have to also identify whether there are nodes above node two. Yes, there is, there are some at least one node like the node one. So now what we have to check is from this subtree, do you have a back edge, at least one back edge that goes above two in this depth first search tree. So once you encircle the nodes of the subtree and, uh, and associated edges like this, we can clearly identify there is one back edge from node four that goes above node two in this uh, depth first search tree. So there's only one subtree and from that subtree there's at least one package that goes above node 2. So that itself will rule out node 2 to be not an articulation point because the presence of that package from node 4 to node 1 from that only subtree. So node 2 is not an articulation point. Now let us apply that rule for node 3. Node 3 uh, has two child nodes 4 and 5 so there are two subtrees. So now this one subtree has just node 4 in it. The other subtree has nodes 5, 6 and 7 in it. Now for what we have to do is from, we have to check whether from each of these subtrees whether there is at least one back edge going above node 3. Now from this subtree, yes, there is one back edge that goes above node 3. So that is fine. Now what about this subtree? From this subtree, 
there is a back edge coming out of the subtree but it goes only up to node 3 it does not go above node 3 so this is similar to the scenario I showed here you have say two or more uh, one or more subtrees and there's one subtree from which there is a back edge that goes only up to you and even such a back edge need not be there uh, what you have to look for is a back edge that goes above you or not so in this example there is no back edge that goes above 3 so that's what we have to look for so the presence of a back edge that goes up to 3 is not mandatory in this example and the hypothetical example we end up seeing something like that but it need not always be the case what you have to look for is whether there is a back edge from the subtree that goes above you above 3 in this case and there's no such back edge that goes above 3 so that itself will rule out uh, what uh, 3 to be an articulation point because there's one subtree from which there is no back edge that goes above 3 okay so vertex 3 is an articulation point and you can always cross check if I remove vertex 3 and all the associated edges yes so this 5 6 and 7 is going to get disconnected because there's no way we can uh, reach uh, the other vertices in this graph from 5 6 or 7 so that's why vertex 3 is an articulation point now we can check whether 8 is an articulation point there is only one style node vertex 8 which is this 9 so this is a subtree 9 10 and 11 and now you can check from this subtree there is the two back edges coming out of the subtree one back edge goes only up to 8 but there's another back edge that goes above 8 to a node above 8 in this depth first search tree so the presence of this back edge between 11 and 1 will rule out 8 to be not an articulation point because there's only one subtree and there's a back edge going from the subtree out above going coming out of the subtree and going above vertex 8 so vertex 8 is not an articulation point similarly 9 is not an articulation point because uh, there's only one subtree from 9 and there's one back edge again this 11 1 goes above 9 similarly 11 is not an articulation point because there's one back edge say this 10 8 that goes above 11 so because of these reasons 8 9 11 are not articulation points similarly 6 is not an articulation point because from 6 we have back edges going above 6 again 5 is not an articulation point because you have back edge from that subtree going above 5 so we identify the subtrees and check if there's at least one subtree from which there's no back edge going above that vertex u so if you apply that rule we identify only 3 to be an articulation point and the root is also an articulation point in this example because it has at least two child nodes. So overall in this graph you have only two articulation points, one and three. Okay. So we'll, that will stop here. So I have another example, we'll continue with this. So as a practice, go ahead and run depth first search on this example and define the three edges and back edges and apply all these rules to decide whether any vertex is an articulation point or not. Okay. So we'll stop with this. Uh,